uh, he wrote this pulse chain client uh, backup script. So this will back up the clients before performing update or restore backed up clients to perform a rollback. So if you do updates, this script can essentially help you back up the clients before in case something goes wrong and then roll them back uh, if something does go wrong. And so you'll still be you know, not in a messed up state. So this is something uh, I haven't got a chance to try it myself, uh, but this is just something that he was working on. He worked with me a lot on the backup script to help uh, figure that issue out, which was very subtle and very, uh, very, very nuanced issue. I'm glad somebody, uh, I'm glad we got some smart people look at the repo and, and give me some tips from time to time. Uh, but I ended up getting that fixed. I was kind of nervous about the last update coming. I was like, oh, okay, I hope it's going to work. I hope it's going to work. Nico said he tested it and it worked. So I'm like, okay. And then I tried it myself. Boom, worked perfectly. Didn't have any issues. So did not have any issues upgrading my clients with the last updates um, for validators uh, with Geth and Lighthouse. And this is a backup script you can use. I'll put it in the chat. If you want to be extra cautious when you're upgrading, you can use a script to back up your stuff. And he documents it as well here. So kind of how to use it. And again, you know, use it, run these things as a node user because that has, has access to a lot of your clients. And another awesome script. We got quite a few cool scripts in the, I'll give you a little tour. The backup script, which backs up and restores uh, clients. If you're going to do an update or otherwise switch them out, you have do snapshot which is a uh, helps you back up the blockchain data. If you're transferring from one server to another, you probably won't have to use this very often uh, because you're probably just going to download it and, uh, you know, just sync it yourself. But if you do want to back up the blockchain data, you know, write all the steps on how to do it here with using SCP, transferring it from server to server over SSH. So there, it's, it takes a long time to back it up, but if there's some use case for it, you want to do it. I kind of did it because I got, like, okay, this may be useful, may not. And... You know, I just wanted to wanted to create it to, to make sure I can actually take it from one place to another and it works. I tested it. Uh, it works. So uh, that is the do snapshot script. You have monitoring setup, which sets up your monitoring. If you want to use Grafana and Prometheus, I don't really look at it that much. I honestly don't look at my validator every week or two. I just check the beacon uh, explorer to make sure it's still, you know, still 98, 99, 100 uh, percent working well. Nothing went down. I talked about different monitoring solutions to give you uh, an email alert if stuff goes down too. I can, I, if you are interested, I can talk about that as well. Uh, but this is a monitoring setup. It gets your Grafana stuff set up. Uh, it has links to some of the staking dashboards and stuff also documented in the GitHub set it up. You can do all this stuff manually uh, or what I prefer to do is do it automatic, auto, automatically with automation. And this is automation that, uh, that I like to do. And new server helper. This is just a, one of the very, very early scripts, probably the second script other than setup I ever wrote, which is just, you know, set your host name, uh, tells your login to be quiet, runs updates, reboots the computer, stuff like that to get your server uh, good to go before you do this setup, uh, run the setup script. So that's uh, once very, very early script. Prune geth. Uh, this one I haven't had the pleasure to fully use yet. I wrote it, I tested it but I hadn't been running a validator long enough for it to need pruning. So if you try to prune and it doesn't need pruning, it'll tell you, hey, it's not time yet. We don't need to do it. So this one, funny enough, you have to wait a few months to test it because we're so early in the process, but I'll probably test this in the next month or two uh, to, uh, to prune it because if you don't prune geth, it could uh, fill up your hard disk over time. So you just need to run this script. The two maintenance things for validators. One, update the clients when you need to. That's critical updates. You know, the last update wasn't really critical as far as I could tell for Geth on the Lighthouse. You know, maybe it was more meaningful to um, Prism or um, Aragon, but it wasn't for these particular clients. So I was like, oh, it's optional, but hey, I want to test the setup script again since we had the issue last time. It worked perfectly. So um, that's the one maintenance thing. Just basically keep your clients up to date as needed. And two, is to, if you're running geth which which you are if you're running the script then you need to prune every once in a while so uh maybe every six months every quarter every year depending on how big a disk you have if you have two terabyte maybe you prune more often if you have a 10 terabyte disk stuff like that so i'm looking forward to fully running this script sometime uh as it's needed and we got the validator setup script. You all know what that does. Um, that's, you know, does all the stuff for you, automates 80, 90% of all the stuff you need to do. 
as much as literally possible. <laughs> I literally automated as much as stuff as you could possibly do. You run this and you just do a few few other things, which are you know heavily described on the wiki, and you wait for it to sync. You make your deposits, you're good to go. So that, that kind of stuff you really can't I can't automate making deposit. I guess you could, but that would be it's just not even necessary. It's like you need to you need some of these things you need to go through the process. Like you need to learn Linux, you need to be able to do command line. Um so some of these things, yeah, it's just better to do yourself. And if I tried to automate them, they would just take a lot of time. There's just not a lot of ROI in automating some of this stuff. So I automated all the stuff that all the boring stuff, I guess you could say. Um away and then the most more interesting stuff that's hard to automate you know each validator uh can, can go do that reset monitoring this is if you want to after you install grafana and prometheus the monitoring setup if you want to undo it this will undo it for you reset rpc so there's an rpc script i haven't got to yet but this will reset the rpc interface on your uh on your node validator if you set that up Reset validator is an important one. You know, if you something goes wrong, you install the validator, doesn't work, whatever, you're like, okay, I think I messed something up, let me reset. You can use this to remove everything except the blockchain data. So if you've been syncing for a while, it won't remove that unless you explicitly uh, change this to true. So you remove blockchain data equals false. Change that to true if you want to explicitly remove all the blockchain data in slash op directory. Otherwise it will leave that and just take off the software and remove the validators and you can try it again without having to resync a lot of stuff. RPC setup, as I mentioned, this is uh, if you want to set up RPC interface, if you want to use your own node, you want to take your validator, which also functions as a node, and you want to use it for transactions, you can totally do that. And here's all the steps to, to do that. You know, people say, oh, I'm exposing RPC service. Gamma recently uh, set up a public RPC service. So basically, he's letting other people use his node to process transactions. He's processing transactions for other people. The public node, point it. Point it to it just as if you would add your pulse chain uh, RPC settings, you would add your Ethereum, whatever. You add another one, which is, you know, Gamma Server, or you set up your own, which a lot of caveats for that. A lot of, you know, you got to get security right. I would not run a public one unless you really know what you're doing. But you can run a private one, which you can have access in your own computer. And this, again, tells you how to do it. And you can process your own transactions and be part of the network and really, you know, get a piece for that. So this will help you. Uh, set up the configuration on your validator to um, to run your own node uh, locally, and it'll um, check out that stuff for you. It's been a long time since I wrote that one, so uh, yeah, just check the check the information documentation if you want to find out more about it. Update client. This is something again. If you want to update the clients, this will automatically do it for you. You have to use the script though. This doesn't update the clients, or it probably won't work if you don't if you haven't used the script in the repo to actually set up your clients. So if you use some other script or you did, did it some other way, it probably won't work. Uh, this will update your clients and it does everything from source. It doesn't use Docker, it doesn't use, any, use anything like that. My script uses bare metal, it uses the clients, builds from source, runs them, and this will also upgrade your clients from source. <clears throat> and the last one, certainly not least, update the uh, <laughs> I didn't need to remove testnet on that. Update the fee address and the IP address. So if you move IP addresses or you have a dynamic one, it's not static for whatever reason, uh, or, or if you just want to change your fee address, this is a script you would use uh, to do that with your setup. And it will just update your configuration, reload your uh, clients, and get that fixed for you. This will allow you, to, if you need to update either your uh, network fee address where your priority fees go or your IP address, which is more common than anything. If your IP address changes, you can use the script to update it. You just put in the same priority fee address or, you know, some people, if you send it to your um, withdrawal address, some people use, use them as the same address. Uh, you would just put that in. Don't change anything on that, obviously. And then uh, put in your IP address. So this is for your priority fee address. So that is your mini tour of those. Let me go to the